It's TK Friday. Today I'll be working with the TK8 multi mask beta panel. I'm calling this one Getting Creative with Texture. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday, and I love TK Fridays, and I hope you do too. Today, I want to take this image, which I really enjoy a lot. I love the gesture of these two flowers here. I think it, it, it evokes a nice emotion for me anyway. But what I want to do is add a nice, beautiful texture to this image and take it from a normal photograph and turn it into more of an artistic piece. And I'll be using the TK8 Multi Mask Beta Panel and the TK8 Com combo beta panel today. Oh, and by the way, if you want to purchase any of the TK panels or videos, I'll leave a link in the description below and you could save 15% off anything by using my promo code DK15. Today I'll be using one texture just to really transform this image, I think into a work of art, and I hope you agree with me. The texture I'm using today is one that I saved into my Photoshop libraries. I'm going to open up my library icon right here, and it's in a group called Textures, and it's this first texture right here. It's called Infinite Texture. I'll link uh, the Infinite Texture information to you in case you're interested in purchasing some good quality textures. Now, they have like a texture data. Database. I'll do a video on, on that at some point in time, but for now, that's where I got that texture from, just so you know, in case you're wondering. By the way, if you don't have your uh, icon for your libraries out on Photoshop, you can come up here to Window and you'll find libraries. Just make sure you check it on. By the way, and I'll leave a link for unsplash.com in the description below this video, you can find a lot of free textures there. And just uh, in the search field, type textures, and it'll bring you to tons of textures that you can use for no charge. Okay, so I have this library panel opened here. And so what I'm going to do is use this texture right here. So all I need to do is click on it, and I'll drag it right above this background layer. And just like that, I've placed this texture. Now it's going in the wrong direction, so I'm gonna right click it. My transform dialog comes up for me automatically. And what I wanna do is uh, rotate this counterclockwise, okay? And now I'm gonna drag it up into the corner here. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and drag the lower right corner and just make it fit my image just like so. Then all you need to do is type your return key to accept this transformation or click this check right here. Now let's work with this texture. Let me go ahead and get rid of the library panel. I'm just gonna click that icon, it goes away. And you'll notice it says infinite texture one and I have this little cloud symbol, meaning I got it from my creative cloud library, which is really nice. Now that creative cloud stores all your different assets that you keep in your libraries and you can use them on your different computers, which is really nice. If you don't use libraries, I think it's something you need to start doing. It's a really great feature of Photoshop. And by the way, this is a smart object by default. So what I'm going to do is I don't need a smart object. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and click rasterize layer and just rasterize it because I really don't need it to be a smart object. The next thing I need to do is blend this into my image. So what I'll do is come to the blending modes, click the drop down, and I usually like to hover over the different blending modes. Now multiply is a very good blending mode, which is the one I think I'm going to use. Color burn can be good, linear burn. I try all these light and screen overlay software soft light, hard light. These are all really good blend modes, but just try till you find one you like. I'm gonna use this one called Multiply. Now that's really strong on there, and this is where luminosity masks come in to help me tame down this texture. And I find this is something that is very valuable for anybody that likes to create uh, images with textures on them to use these luminosity masks. And I'll show you how this all works. Now you could take this opacity and just start to drag it down, but I still don't don't like the way it looks so I'm going to show you how I can combine a luminosity mask. I'll be clicking on this luminosity mask icon here in a second but before I do that I need to click on this icon and this is going to attach a layer mask a reveal all layer mask to this particular layer and now I can come here and click on this icon and this is a special icon what it does is it lets me apply any one of these luminosity masks you know lights one through six or darks one through six or midtones one two and three on to this uh, layer mask right here which is really nice now all I need to do is find the right one and how do I know which is the right one well 
I generally start clicking around just to see. I'll start with a lights one, click on here, and I can see that's not really going in the right direction because not much effect is happening to this image here. So I'm not seeing a lot of the uh, texture. So I'm going to try a darks one. And yeah, that looks really good. Let me try a midtones one. Now nah, that's not going in the right direction. I could try midtones three. Mm, still not the right direction. I think the darks one is pretty close to what I want, but let me try a darks two. That's even better. And if I click this, this icon here, I can see what that luminosity mask looks like. Let me click a one. And you can see these petals, which are light on the flower, are a little on the dark side here, so they, they won't be getting as much of the effect on them. But if I click on the darks too, they're being protected even more. And that's what I really want to do. I want to protect these real light petals on here. So I'm going to use that one. I'm going to click this icon again, and we can see my result with that uh, darks too layer mask attached to this texture. Now it's still really light. The texture is not as strong as I want, but however, if I zoom into this image, you can see that texture is not as strong on these lighter petals as it is on the rest of the image. I'm gonna go ahead and close this adjust layer mask. I'll click this X and it will close it out. Now, how do you think I can make this textured effect stronger? And if you're thinking duplicate this layer, you are correct. So let's duplicate this layer. We'll double it up. So all we need to do is we could do Command or Control J to do that, or we could come right here to this icon on the TK8 combo beta panel, and we can duplicate it. And look how much stronger it is. And that really looks nice. Now, what if I wanted it even stronger yet? I can duplicate it one more time. Now, it's way too strong, but let me take this opacity and let's ease it back. And I'm thinking maybe somewhere around like 30, yeah, 30%. 30 here's the before and here's the after. So that's looking really good. And I really like how that Darks 2 layer mask is protecting these petals. I have a lot of nice effect all around the flower. It's very beautiful. But I'm easing it off on the petals through that Darks 2 mask. Just to keep things organized, I want to put all three of these layers inside a group. So the top layer is selected. I'm going to hold my Shift key down and select the bottom. And then I'm going to click on this icon right here, the right side of this group icon. When I click it, it'll put all those layers inside of a group. And I'm going to name this group Texture. Okay, and it's got the three layers inside of it. And as you can see right there, there they are. But now I can shut this eye off. We can see there's our before and here's our after. Now we're really going in the right direction in my opinion. And if I feel that texture's too strong, I can take the opacity of the group and start to pull it back if I need to. But I like it up at 100%, I think it looks good. Next, I think I wanna lighten the entire image up a little bit. And I think I'm gonna use a levels adjustment and I'm gonna use an auto levels adjustment. I'll show you something a little different here. And I'm going to be using a some kind of a mid-tones mask to make that adjustment through. I'm gonna to come to the TK8 combo beta panel and click this icon and grab a levels adjustment. Now it's just a levels adjustment with a white layer. Now next what I wanna do is come over to my levels adjustment and you see here where it says auto, I'm gonna click auto and it's going to do an auto levels adjustment, okay? And now we can hold the option or alt key down and click auto and we have some different options here We can enhance brightness and contrast. We can find the dark and light colors We can enhance per channel contrast and I try all these different ones enhance mono chromatic contrast And that one's not too bad. Actually, let's compare that between enhance brightness and contrast Okay, I think I'm going to try Enhance Brightness and Contrast. Just click OK. Now, I know that doesn't look very good, but we're going to use Luminosity Mask. So we're going to come to that same icon, click it, and now we can try some different uh, Midtones masks on here. So let me try Midtones 1. There's Midtones 1. It's looking pretty good. It tames it down. Here's Midtones 2. And here's Midtones 3. So I think I like Midtones 1. Here's Midtones 1. Now let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. See how it lightens it up and gives me a little pop of contrast. I like the way the flower starts to get a little lighter in here. Let me try a 2, a Midtones 2. 
Actually, I might like that. Let me see. Here's a before and here's an after. So the before and the after. You know what? I think I like it, but I might just take the opacity and pull it back a little bit. Maybe somewhere around, you know, 80%. Here's the before and here is the after. Again, the before and the after. And I like it. I think it's moving in the right direction. We're almost there. Now, I have an issue, I think, where these areas of the flower are a little bit too light. Like you see right here and here and maybe over here. I just want to balance this out a little bit. I'm going to use a zone mask for that. So let's X out of this and let's click on this icon for zone masks. And what I want to do is pick a zone, some of these lighter areas in here, like, like right here. I'm going to click this and click OK. And as you can see, it's targeting that really well. I can narrow that down a little bit by moving this narrow slider a little bit in. Maybe somewhere right around there looks good. And then what I want to do is do some burning. So I'm going to burn on a 50% gray layer. Now, when I click here, I'm going to get a 50% gray layer. I'm going to be burning through a selection. You can see my selection indicators indicating I have a selection. It sets me up with black paint. And I'm in the soft light blend mode. And right now my opacity is at 10%. So I can have a pretty decent sized brush here. And I'm just going to start painting across these areas that are a little bit too light. And every time I paint, I'm adding more, more darkening, you know, through that selection. So I'm just going to go through these a few times. Now I'm at 10%. So it's, it's causing me to paint a lot, but it's helping me to get a more accurate paint job by building that up slowly. Now I might go to 20% when I come to this area. I'm just going to type my two key and just paint this down. Just want to darken this up because I don't want our eyes to be drawn too much to that. And even over here, I'm going to go back to 10% and just pull this down and this down a little bit. I think I'm going to come up into here. I'm going to go to 20%, make my brush a little smaller and just darken this some of these lighter areas here, because I don't want our eyes going up in here so much. I want our eye to stay right around in this area right in here. Now let me go ahead and zoom out, okay? And let's take a look. Here is the before, and here's the after. So you see how light that was in there? Here's the before, and here's the after. But it just balances that out really well, in my opinion. Now we're almost done, but Right in here, I want to lighten this area up a little bit here and maybe the top of this cone flower a little bit and maybe some of the light area up in here a little bit as well. So let's find a zone mask for that. So let me click here. First off, I'm going to get some of these colors here. I'm going to click right here and click OK and see how well that targets that really nicely. I'm going to go ahead and narrow that down a little bit like that and I'm going to get a dodge layer here. 50% gray, and I'll be dodging through a selection. It's going to set me up with white paint in the overlay blend mode, and I'm going to go to 10%, make my brush a little larger, and just lighten this up in here, all through here. Okay? Just give that a little lightening. Here's the before, and here's after. See, that it looks really nice. Now I'm going to grab another zone mask, so click this icon again, and now I'm going to sample some of the light areas in here. So I'm going to click right here, click OK. And you can see it's targeting the top of this cone flower and some of this area up in here. So I think that's going to be good. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. No, I guess I lied. I'm going to narrow that very, a very slight amount right there, I think is good. And then I'm going to dodge through a selection on a 50% gray layer again. So I'll click right here. And now I'm set up in the overlay blend mode and I'm dodging through a selection on a 50% gray layer with white paint. And right now I have an opacity of 20%. I'm going to make my brush like really large right now. And not quite that large. Right like that. I'm going to click here one time and see how that lightens that up. I'm going to click a second time. It lightens again. I'm going to pull back, lighten here a couple times, hit it another time, move back a little more, a couple hits there. And maybe make the brush a little smaller and come in right in this area and hit that one time. Now I'm going to make my brush a lot smaller 
and I'm going to change my opacity from 20% down to 10%. I'm just typing the 10 key, and I'm just going to paint across here. Maybe one more time right there. And let's see, here is the before, and here is the after. So it just adds that nice little uh, kiss of light right down through here and on top of the cone flower. Oh, and hey, check this out. I have this layer shut off, so let's turn that layer back on. That's this part of the flower right here, so... I'll turn that back on. Now that looks much better. As you notice, we still have a selection made. See these lines here and the colors around here. To get rid of your selection, just come here and click this icon here. That shuts your selection off. Let's go ahead and shut this uh, properties panel down as well. But we started out looking like this. I'm just option clicking this background image. We started out looking like this and we end up looking like this and I'm really happy with it. Now you could continue to work on it or you could save it out with your layers, whatever you want to do. But at this point for now, at least I think I'm going to call this done. Well, there it is everyone working with textures and luminosity masks. They are a marriage made in heaven. You need to give it a try. I think it'll take your texturing to a whole new level. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.